This is the U.S. Army's state-of-the-art tank, the M1A2, with its computer-controlled firing systems and digital communications. This giant lump of metal is highly sophisticated. The A2 is really the first information age tank. It's more like a computer behind an armored box. It really is the dawn of a new era in tanking. It's also extremely powerful. The gas turbine engine delivers an awesome 1,500 horsepower. The tank can go 30 miles an hour cross country, allowing the gunner to engage targets out to and beyond 2,000 meters. That's more than most off-road vehicles can go at 30 miles an hour cross country. You're shaking all over this place. Imagine driving 68 and a half tons. This thing weighs 68 and a half tons, fully combat loaded. The armor on a tank has to provide protection for the vehicle and its crew. But if it carries too much armor, it can't move fast enough. The challenge is to gain maximum protection with minimum weight. For the M1A2, the armor is cut from steel plate. In places, protection is up to a foot thick. The total weight of this armored plate accounts for half the weight of the fully laden tank. Each tank is held together by one and a half miles of welding. The welds alone weigh over half a ton. Tanks are built in two separate parts. What goes in this big hole here is a turret, which contains the weapon systems of the tank. Inside the hull are pipes and cables to link the digital processors which control the tank. It's more like a, a computer within a big armored box, sort of like your internal LAN system within your home PC. The systems are high tech, but the tank's mobility still depends on the continuous tracks invented 80 years ago. They're designed to spread the weight of the tank over a large surface area, so it's less likely to get bogged down. On the M1A2, each track is 50 feet long, made up of 79 metal segments with replaceable rubber blocks. The tracks are driven by drive wheels, powered by the engine at the rear of the tank. The tank is steered by altering the speed at which each track is driven. The killing power of a tank is determined by its firepower. The main armament of the M1A2 is the 120 mm smooth bore gun. Before it is installed into the tank, every gun is tested with live ammunition. Tanks are controlled by computer, and every last electrical component must be checked. These systems also allow the crew to communicate by email with the command center and to receive pictures showing where the tank stands on the battlefield. When the turret and the hull are completed, they're joined together. The seal is so perfect that it protects the crew from chemical warfare. Each tank consists of over 5,000 parts and costs four and a half million dollars. The final stage is to paint the exterior in the relevant camouflage colors. From start to finish, it takes four months to build each tank. Before any tank is delivered to the Army, it's put through its paces to make sure it's fully functional. If there are any operational problems, they're easy to identify. This tank will tell you when it's not feeling well. 
And not only will it tell you when it's not feeling well, it'll tell you what part of it isn't feeling well. The advanced suspension system is tested on the factory's bump track. These trials include acceleration tests up to its top speed of 42 miles per hour and an emergency stop. It can go from 30 miles an hour to a full stop in 10 feet. can hold steady on a 60 degree slope. And it can cross a river up to four feet deep. When I first got on this tank and got trained on it, my immediate thought was, Man, it's the closest thing to flying without leaving the ground. I mean, you get into that and it's like entering a whole new world in the capabilities, the functionalities, and the potential that this weapon system has over previous weapon systems.